How are you? How's Eckhart? A friend over at Crusader said you've been building quite a rep. Chris runs through everything and edits all the scenes how he wants them to look or how the acting to work. Once that's done, that could come from, say, three or four different takes. But with an editor, he'll use the editor's time code, basically, to make the, create that scene and what he wants. And then from there, that data, that quad cam data and that time code gets sent out and then gets solved. I'm always on the lookout for capable people who don't rattle. If you're interested in picking up some extra work, we should talk. I'll send my details. And then once that data is solved, it comes back to us, but it comes back in pieces per mm -hmm. takes. And what we do is we take that data and merge it together to make that one scene work together. Yeah. Remember to not beat the table too much. Welcome everyone to Reverse the Verse, live from Frankfurt, our very first one. I, uh, today is August 26, 2016. I am Brian Chambers, Development Director of the Frankfurt Office. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Reverse the Verse is CIG's weekly and Foundry 42's weekly uh, broadcast. Um, we do this directly after Around the Verse to give you a little more insight into what we showed and also give you an opportunity to talk with some of the guys and ask them questions directly. Um, for questions, feel free to submit the questions to robertspaceindustries.com. Um, do it in the chat area. Uh, the one thing we ask is if you're going to post questions, to put the word questions in brackets. That way we can easily sort through them and uh, find out exactly you know, what we're going to answer for you guys. Um, for today, our first guest that you've seen with me before on ATV is Jason Cole. He's our lead cinematic animator. Uh, you'll discuss your contribution to the quest giver yeah and uh, <laughs> what that was and what that was all about yes. right um, so we just showed a little bit of that uh, just before we started here um, let's just jump right into it and we got to make sure we look at the camera because that's where everyone is right yeah um, so miles Eckhart right yeah. our first quest giver H how did it feel to actually get that uh, in game and have that? you know, in, in the, the live stream that, that Chris was showing off and having that function. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, it's surprising. And I think it was pretty good to see that. I think and seeing the Hawker stuff too. Yeah, it yeah. came yeah. out like last minute. So yeah. yeah. But it was cool. It like worked the way it was supposed to, which was fantastic. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Did you have, um, I, I know you guys have been working quite a bit on, uh, you know, within animation and within cinematics, there's so many, as I always say, there's so many dependencies. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, characters need to be there, it needs to be rigged, you need audio, you need lighting, you need things modeled, you need environments and so yeah. on. So uh, what were some of the bigger challenges, I think, you know, or some of the stuff that's come in late that, that is now allowing you guys to get these things done? I think it's mainly just like the tools and getting the tools in. Uh, we've been converting our, I want to say converting our pipeline, but we've been integrating more Maya stuff because in Maya we can sync up the face animation and the facial heads yeah, yeah, and rigs yeah. and all that stuff. So this is the first time where we really tested it to run live in like, you know, Persistent Universe so that would go out to the public or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, but those tools are still being integrated on, but they're, they're like the base is working now. So we can yeah, just yeah. start using it and checking it and seeing with the face guys. No, that's cool. That stuff, that's yeah. cool. Were you there at the mocap shoot when, um, when he, he performed? Yeah. Actor? Yeah. 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 I think uh, it, and that jumps off to some of our questions. Somebody was actually asking who played Miles. Do you know who it was? I don't know the name? gentleman's name, no. Yeah. I'm so bad with actors' names. He was in the video, yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we can find his name and maybe put it in the notes afterwards. Yeah. But, um, he was good, though. He's a good voice. He did a few other actors, a few characters in the game as well. Uh, another question comes in. Do we know if all quest givers will be voiced? You know, if all the quests, it's probably more of a design, but... Yeah, I don't know. I know that they are planning for 3.0 to add more quest giver stuff and more dialogue through PU. So I think the more that face pipeline and audio pipeline gets synced, the more that they'll add into PU. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know I've, I've seen you guys' lists and lists and lists. I know, so I know it's thick. Yeah, yeah. So I know, you know, the amount of uh, facial animation that's attached to these things to help kind of give more guidance to the player is fairly in depth. Right, right. And like like I was saying, like the more the tools become streamlined, yeah. the easier it is to get the stuff in faster so yeah. the more we can add. So that was like, that was the first time we ever actually ran that 
test system or that system like that. Absolutely. One of the other questions that just came in, which we kind of just answered, says, is Miles Eckhart the only cinematic quest giver in 3.0? I don't think he'll be. I mean, they're, they're literally talking about scheduling a shoot to, to shoot more stuff specifically for 3.0 to add yeah, yeah. stuff. So how much they'll add, I, I don't know. It's still very, you know, pre-production. But yeah, 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 I, yeah. CR intends to add more. But I mean, it, as production goes, we know from, you know, now kind of the big to, you know, the end of when we have it all there. But as we go through the process, sometimes there's a little more here. Sometimes our attention has to go to a different area and so on. So, yeah. I mean, I know the list is thick and I believe the assumption is right now is you would have definitely more than just miles and 3.0, but I know yeah. more details will come out of that in the yeah. next few weeks probably. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our, our my, my main focus isn't really usually PU, so that was the first time we ran that system. So now that we have learned it, we'll we'll hand that more off to the PU guys and they'll they'll do a lot more with that stuff. Now, okay. it's my understanding too with you know a lot of PU and you got Tony and Austin yeah. and we have animators there as well. So you guys are going to be working in conjunction with them as well, right? The totally. animators there? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I think we'll definitely be helping them train them up on the tools and stuff and they need assistance. We help out like we did with this last PU. Yeah, yeah. Like Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Um, what would you, in working with uh, the team that we currently have over there, I mean, how's that going? I ask you because it's, you know, it's a fairly new team that we've built up here in, in Germany. Yeah. There's some guys you've worked with in the past and other guys you haven't, yeah. you know, but how's, how's that working out so far as the team? It's good. Like, I think, I think our team here in Frankfurt's really strong. Yeah. Um, UK has a pretty good team. And then Austin's really good as well. They actually had more stuff to go into the PU. We, yeah. so we actually saw like, there was like actually subsumption where like people were walking around in that space and like the market and stuff that yeah. we were seeing in earlier builds. And then for some reason on the last build, they didn't go through. Yeah. Because it was actually pretty awesome. There was guys, you know, walking up to the bar and then sitting at the bar, yep. drinking and then walking away. So I mean, and that's, that's a, a fair point to say yeah. that, you know, there's a good amount of stuff that, that we're doing, you know, what we showed at the live event isn't everything we have, right? It's it's what came together and worked in a way that we thought was representative of where it should be. Yeah. We have a good amount of stuff that's also from all the different studios um, that, that's got great progress and things are just about there. But, you know, we want to make sure that they're fully there before we're, we're presenting them out. Yeah. You know, yeah. Outwards. Um, let's see what other questions. Um, how long did it take you guys from the moment you got the actor into the studio until you were done with the final version of the journal video? And how much improvement do you see the pipeline seeing that the time 3.0 is just over the horizon? So how much, what time would you say? I know we kind of talked about the process in the video where we said, oh, we shot and then we do this and this. But like duration of time, what would you say that took? Uh, it didn't take very long. I mean, we shot we shot the quest giver stuff at the end of the the last PU shoot. Yeah. You know, or the last shoot, right? And then so we literally had three weeks to put everything together for Eckhart and the Hawkers, and um, and Mechan too, actually. The guy, yeah. Yeah. The other guy that waved flags in or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah. So that was within three weeks, and then on top of that, we were testing the system. We haven't yeah. run that system, so we're using an OptiTrack system that was getting solved in-house, and then we were syncing all the faces, which we've done before, but we did it old school manually. This time, it was the first time we actually used the tools. So it's there, there's a lot of other things that we, we ran into a lot of issues actually within those three weeks because mm -hmm. uh, we're updating our facial like real time runtime logic right for the faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna add use more like um, a facial board. So we can turn on like have more control over look IK and oh, cool. turning that on and off yeah. and all that stuff. But for Ek for Eckhart, mm -hmm. we actually had to revert to the older system because um, all the NPC heads haven't been completely updated to the new one. Gotcha. The three of them. So it'd be hard to gauge the actual time then. Yeah, right? With, but but I would say like it's, if, it's, if you had to do it today. And what you know and what you've learned and now that the pipeline's in place. Yeah, I, I, would, I don't think it would take a song. It was pretty straightforward. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, he had maybe less than a minute of time. I, I would say maybe like two weeks at the most. 
Okay. Like start to finish. If, cool. if we had somebody specifically on solving and then an animator right off it and all yeah. the tools were working proper, then like, and that's, that, and that's being very generous. Absolutely. Right? And, and usually in the estimates too that, that you know, we give out on the production end and even, you know, we ask the other leads to, we also, you know, we have to understand that um, we need to put a little bit more time into those estimates as well just to uh, foresee if there's any issues that have come up, right? So if we say, you know, two weeks that we may go, oh, well, we think it'll take us seven days. Yeah. But you need to allow for that time just in case something comes up. Um, or actually other tasks come in that may take some priority or so on. Yeah, it's weird too because there's some things that you think will take like, you know, two or two weeks and they only take like two or three days and then vice versa. You think yeah. something's going to be easy. And then... Somebody has just asked, um, how many chicken burgers can Brian Chambers eat? <laughs> um, I, I guarantee you I can probably eat more than anyone. <laughs> Um, What's the size of the chicken burger? I, I don't know. And I really haven't been, yeah. Whatever. And is that with toppings and cheese? Uh, we saw a quest giver example. Will the quest content each time be procedural, random generated, or will each Miles Eckhart be more scripted and always give the same mission, so on and so on and so on? Uh, I don't know. That's something I have no idea. I would think that they would, they would stack the quest right on Eckhart, but you might get so within those stacks, like you might get a, re a random request, right? Yeah, so yeah, say yeah. if they shoot 50 quests, you might get, I don't know if they're going to do it based on your level or if they're just going to be random within that, like I have no idea. And, and that might have been, a, you know, my fault for pulling that question. But for Jason, I mean, it's in, in the animation and, and there, it's kind of, here's the stuff that needs to animate, here's the scenes that need to be put together. Yeah, right? yeah. As far as... Um, the different types of missions, how random they are, which ones will be procedural versus scripted versus a mix between the two. That's probably, that's more than kind of a design focus or design driven question. Um, Miles seemed to have evasive eye movement. Was this an acting thing or tech issue? Uh, no, that's, that's acting. Uh, it's him trying to be sketchy, right? Yeah, and, like, exactly. Look over his shoulder and... Yeah. yeah, I wish we had more time to make it look better. We just didn't have enough time. Yeah. But um, the thing is, is that like eventually like the look I came, right now we can only turn it on and off, yeah. but we can't like blend it. So eventually like he'll be able to look at you and then when he doesn't want to look at you, he'll look away and look that way. Yeah. So when, when you're sitting there, he's he's generally looking at you, but he's not actually making like eye contact yeah, straight with eye the contact. player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but when he, when he flags you over, when he goes like, hey, come over here, have a seat, like that's look IK like, hey, on. He, he is looking and yeah. at you and talking to you. And that's all, not only the eyes, but a portion of the upper body blended through. Yeah, and exactly. So, on, yeah. so we're trying to get more control over that so we can really dial that in. You know? That's cool. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to add based off of the, that piece or is it pretty much straightforward and it is what it is? It is what it is. I mean, <laughs> you know. Uh, it was a good first pass. It's definitely going to yeah. get better, though. I mean, yeah, we it it will get better. I mean, I've seen the the, the facial alone grow leaps and bounds. You yeah. know, you, if you look at the stuff that that we've put out six eight months ago versus to where it is now, it's it's kind of night and day. Yeah, right. I mean, like as far as I'm concerned, like what we what we put out within three weeks. I mean, we didn't really spend any time polishing it. So I yeah. mean, we could add way more to the face, way more to the acting. You know. You know, blends from getting up and in and out, and when he's talking to you, but that just it takes time. That's cool. And well, awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for coming. Yeah. Hanging thank out. You. Yeah. Coming live with us for the first time from Frankfurt. So, thanks for coming, taking some questions. Um, we will take a short break. We'll see another video uh, based off of who's going to come back with us. So we'll throw it to the video, and we'll see you in a few. Cool. Thanks, guys. Gamescom, we can see several examples of the navigation mesh. So uh, this is uh, an example of an actual setup uh, where we can see there are two main uh, areas. 
like uh, a landing pad with some navigation area and a constellation. So what we actually created is just a setup in which this character is just moving across three spots on the area. And there is another character inside here that will do something very similar. It will move inside three different uh, block points or locations in this area, one here, one on this remote computer, and one here. And we'll play some animation. So now that we will jump in game, so this is a, a simple setup I created uh, before with the help of some of the designers uh, in which a spaceship, in our case the constellation we set up before, uh, is spinning on top of a landing pad. Now we are inside, we can see an NPC moving across the uh, two different locations. So this is the first one, he plays just an animation, he arrives to the spot, he plays an animation and he goes to the uh, computer board and he starts to just interact with it. Awesome. Welcome back. Our next guest, as you just saw in the video, is Francesco Rucucci, our lead AI programmer. Um, he'll discuss more on the nav mesh and what you saw there in AI in general. So thanks for Hi. hanging out. Hi guys. Yeah, it's my pleasure. We, we've done a, a TV and all that stuff before, so yeah, you're used to a camera in front of your face. It's, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's, uh, I feel like enough comfort. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, no, the, the nav mesh was cool. You know, it was um, as far as kind of giving out information, I think of one of the more technical, right? We try to be, you know, as much technical as we can. Yeah. I think maybe I wish we had more time to explain like what was kind of the new the new part there, like yeah. for people that are not so much familiar. Because well, no, we're we're here now, so that yeah, gives us some opportunity. Totally. So I mean, I was going to kick it off and say, you know, the um, the nav mech, uh, with the nav mesh work that you showed off and knowing that there's this huge elaborate AI roadmap and yeah. assumption and all that, how really does nav mesh then play into that? Because I know it's an incredibly important part. Yes, it so is. So it's just be important for you, for me, interesting to hear you explain that to everyone. I think basically the, the one really critical part is that the nav mesh seems like very basic functionality on the AI, right? It's just like one guy moving from one place yeah. to another. And it seems pretty trivial because at the end of the day, a very well-known uh, problem and, and a very well-solved problem on AI, right? But but what we do is the different parts, like you know, having like systems that move uh, in different ways, one you know, in relation to the other, yeah. and also being, you know, I think the critical part is also like being uh, able to navigate from different parts of the universe, yeah. and this is what I think is really unique. Yeah, uh, I agree. Even just between different meshes. Because it's not so trivial to allow a character to move from one, from one part that he knows to another part that he doesn't yeah. know, right? I, I have probably wasted months and months of my career working on things just like that yeah. in the past. And it's something that we've been able to achieve in a, in totally. a fairly short amount of time. Yeah, we had, like, I think I think we were very happy of how the progress was in a few yeah. weeks. And then we were like, oh, you know what, like, let's try to, you know put more stuff in. And I think, yeah, I would yeah. have, you know, I, I wish we had more time also to put it in the Gamescom demo. Uh, but you know, I think like this is something people would, anyway will see in the next update. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, it's always that we try. We want to show as much as possible. To the Absolutely. People, so. uh, with AI and with Star Citizen Squadron Forty Two, um, we keep hearing the word subsumption. So yeah. one of the questions that's come in from one of the viewers is, um, what? Can you give a quick explanation of what subsumption actually means? Okay. So subsumption is uh, is. Um, let's say, a, a collection of systems. So we, we call subsumption what it is, like both the behavior and description of characters, the mission system, the definition of how we set up things in the world, in the universe. Mm -hmm. So like subsumption is really the overall systems that collect, connects the AI to the game code and the actual engineered So it's got everything. Code. It's got the yeah, nemesis, it's got all the AI careers, yeah. it's got the behaviors. So basically we start from the behaviors. So yeah. each character is basically can have what we call activities and sub-activities. So mm -hmm. an activity is something we can associate with a job or, you know, the current job the guy is, is doing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you are like a, a cleaning guy in a, in a spaceship, this is your activity, it's like cleaning guy. You know? yeah, yeah. And that is made by different sub-activities that are actually your actions. So it could be 
cleaning the floor, you know, uh, cleaning the kitchen, the mess hall, you know, yeah, yeah. going around and make sure there are no boxes around and stuff like this. And then the character will iterate through different sub activities. Uh, but then there is also the mission system that is the one that actually will say, well, you player needs to do this mission and to do this mission, you need to have these specific characters yes. yep. doing these specific things or, you know, and then we have like the scheduler that is what the action allows you to say, well, now it's morning, you should just work. But somebody else is actually sleeping because he has a yeah. Then there's there's a whole account. priority system yeah, that sits on top of it. it and, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Well, we hopefully like, that gave a little yeah, little more yeah. detail. We have like a lot of things here. Like we could go like for hours. Um, another question that's in, which was interesting, in the nav mesh video, I noticed that the nav mesh was also on the top exterior of the ship. Yeah. Eventually, will NPCs be able to climb on a ship for repairs, etc., or why was it there? Yeah, it was for that reason. Yeah. So basically, it's up like it's up to the designer somehow if they want to have it external or yeah. not or all internal. But in general, I think like this is what I set up with the other designers here as an example because it's really important that the eye is able to move anywhere where the player can. So Absolutely. like the spaceships there, they have some exit that you, they allow you to go on top. Yep. So this is what also the eye should be able to Absolutely. do. But for repairing, or imagine like there is a mission in which they need to jump off and go in ABA somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And this is the only exit, they should be able to You'll do it. Yeah, if they yeah. are night boots, they should be able to, you know, still be attached to the to the spaceship and move around. So this is why it's there to give this knowledge to the eye in the future. Um, let's see, will AI on landing pads evade landing spacecraft so i guess the question is like so if ships come and land yeah uh, if the eye can so basically i think this the idea is like whenever the eye it would be the same as players right so like yeah. uh, to, uh, to access a landing pad you need to request the landing pad once it's assigned to you you will use it then the spaceship will go kind of in the hangar and then it will be moved away from the guys that work there so basically AI will be able to land only on assigned uh, pads that are free for them. Mm -hmm. And you know, if they, for some reason, they cannot do it anymore, they will be notified. And then it's like, well, so it, then, then it's not available for you anymore. So it's the same knowledge, it's, it's same, as, yeah. same communication system as, way, but it's, as yeah. the players, yeah. right? It's basically the key is always on the behavior. So we always have our behavior centric because, you know, if the brain of the eye is correct, it does exactly the same as a player would do. Yeah, exactly. Follow specific rules. Yeah. Um, here's one I'm not sure if you would know, but I know you've done some tests about how many NPCs are planned to be inside of a station walking around, 10 to 20 or more like 50, etc. So our goal is to have as much as we can, right? Yeah, of course. So I think the idea is... Well, yeah, I would say not even that though. I would say as much makes sense. As much makes sense. Because if, if, the, the if the I can fit 200 in a small area, I don't want course, to, right? Of course. Yeah. But I like big square, like in some yeah. of the landing areas that are pretty big and you want to have maybe hundreds of yeah, right? So the idea is like actually to use a kind of LOD system for the eye as well. So we can have like the one you want to interact with are more complex and they cost more. But the one that are far away, you know, they, they are cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Of course. The, the reality is that the eye itself is very cheap because the way we are developing subsumption is like almost based on templates and then what we call runtime data. So like each AI <coughs> is actually a subset in memory of stuff that they, they execute, and also the amount of task, the sub task that they execute at the certain given time is pretty minimal. Yeah. So like we can actually run a lot of AI, but then we have you know other dependencies like. Animations or of course, of this course. Is what we need to yeah, I don't think AI is any you know really intensive. If is, you will. No. Have you guys? Well, let me phrase it a different way. Have you run any tests so far that you were unable to populate an area to the level that you thought should be? So I, yeah, a bit. I think we try to be smart and we try to keep. So what we are trying to do right now, for example, in the Gamescom demo, we mm -hmm. try to keep enable only the eye that are around players. So like okay. and this yeah, was yeah, around yeah. like I think thirty around thirty, forty eyes was okay. kind of the limit right now. Uh, yeah, based yeah, on yeah. the animations, animated character, yeah. all the really the character. And that's that's control. also without a lot of optimizations that we yeah. you know and so on. So yeah. okay. Well that's cool. It's encouraging. One of the first steps. Uh, here's another interesting one, which I don't know what the answer exactly would be, but Somebody asked, how do nav meshes work when it comes to zero G? Okay, zero G will use, so 
it's not non mesh at that point. So like because at that point you don't want to be non mesh yeah. is basically a representation of surface. Yeah, yeah. So it yeah. could be like if you want to use Mac boots at that point you would still use a non mesh style. Okay. Where you generate like on the different uh, kind of gravity section, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but on zero G, I think our plan is basically to have this uh, kind of hierarchical pathfinder. So you can say, uh, I need to fly to this other station, right? So my first step is navigating on a surface towards a, um, a spaceship. Then entering into the spaceship, then flying to this other, you know, place, mm -hmm. this other planet, then land on this other planet, and then go drop off and walk. Mm -hmm. And if in the middle there is, I don't know, a zero G environment, then what it will happen, the what I will do is say, well, it will exit maybe the the um, let's say spaceship or let's say like you know a generator gets destroyed and then they're in zero G. Yeah. At that point they will have to navigate the environment as kind of, you know, uh, backpack yeah, yeah. And, and did that did that because you know we briefly mentioned the complexity of going from like a, a solid ground plane nav mesh to then here's a ship and it's coming in at whatever yeah. angle. <clears throat> then I started thinking of EVA. If I, if I'm in that ship and then I bust it out and then I'm going to another ship but it's slept in you mm -hmm. know completely different orientation, yes. even upside down. Of course. Right? The complexity is there. That is our big challenge yeah. for the future. Because I think, as you said, like the main critical part is really the orientation of the different areas. Of course. And we need to understand like what a player would do. I mean, of course, spaceships usually have some entry section. Yeah. So you can always use that as saying, like, well, I need to EVA yeah, kill the it. entry section. Yeah, yeah. And then I will, you know, be in this other environment. Because also like there are all this transition from one local grid, uh, the, yeah. the global, uh, you know, create a zone and then entering into another one, and this is what we are basically what we will have to deal with in the future. So. That's cool. Um, another question Can AI interact with more than one player at the same time? Mm -hmm. That is just based on the behavior. So, like, basically, the AI perceives everything around, like, it perceives one, two, three, four players. Okay. What the behavior wants to do is what you know will drive. So imagine I have two players, I want to speak a bit with you, a bit with the other guy. Well, my perception, what my knowledge of you guys is always active. Okay. Uh, then I can say like, oh, now I'm talking to Brian. And then if I will use you as a target. And basically using you as a target just means on the behavior side, storing you inside specific variable that I reference. Mm -hmm. And then when I want to interact with the other character, I will just do the other one. So like there are different query mechanics to interact with the player. So you can say like, give me the enemy that is closest. Or you know, we will have things like, give me the enemy where the, the most dangerous weapon. And then you can select these type of things. But in the meantime, your perception is always active. You get more targets, you get more friend tar you know, friendly mm -hmm. guys or enemy guys. Yeah. And then you can decide what to do with those. So. That's cool. <clears throat> this was fairly straightforward, but a few questions have come in about um, will or how will AI react to sudden changes in the environment, like depressurization and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So basically, the, the idea is like, it's always about based on the behavior. So we yeah. base a lot on the behavior. Of course. So like, let's say I'm in a normal environment, I'm trying to do something, then the ambient gets depressurized. Yeah. So. At that point, I will receive an information from the environment in which I am. Say, look, like the environment gets depressurized. So, in that case, we can create specific reactions uh, to that specific event mm -hmm. that is critical. Like, it's not just like a light that goes on. Well, I would assume something like that. You know, depressurization. It changed completely what I'm trying to do. Highest so, priority. Highest right? priority. Right? Yeah. So it's like if I am cleaning up and then I cannot just stand there anymore. Yeah. Well, you know what? I would panic. You know, probably. <laughs> 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 Well, that comes actually, to the that comes to the fight or flight, right? It yes, gets to that point of okay, what is the base root of who I am, and am I fighting? Totally. Am I running? Am I? And the thing is, like each character could actually have different reactions. So, like you know, civilian characters will not react in the same way as a military guy. Yeah, yeah. If you are in combat, you're not reacting the same way. Like yeah, similar yeah. to how we did with uh, uh, you know friendly characters that dies next to you, right? If you are just a guy working normally, is he a friendly? that person, yeah. then you will freak out because you're not expecting that. Yeah, yeah, but if yeah. I'm in a combat scenario with a player, well, I expect that my friends can could die and I won't react in the same way. Absolutely. And the same with environmental changes, it will be very similar things. Okay. There will be critical changes, less critical changes, and it depends on, you know, how important is my activity and what Absolutely. I'm actually doing. If I'm asking, maybe, you know, if I'm requesting some enforcement, 
Well, I would still try to ask for enforcement somehow, right? So I would try to, you know, panic a bit and then still try to EVA, you know, if I'm in zero G at that point, try to press a button to call enforcement yeah, yeah, yeah. or, you know, try to reach yeah. a radio or, you know, something like that. That's cool. I mean, one of the things that, that, that I think is really cool, one of the many things, is when I look over the amount of careers and just knowing that those careers that the players can ultimately pick and it's just yeah. the, the kind of long-term schedule, the AI needs to be able to function in all of those as well yeah. and the complexity that's in between there. And it really does turn, you know, somebody in one certain suit, they may be and have an aggressive career versus somebody else that has a very passive. So. Yeah. One guy's gonna fight, one guy's gonna run, yet they look similar. They, right? look, they look the same. So and then a lot it depends on animations, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, on, of course. on voices. So basically, I think the good thing of this project is we will add constantly content, right? And yeah, yeah, this yeah. will be not only animations or voices, but it also will be content on the behavior side. Absolutely. So the more, more we release stuff and more complex the AI will be. Yep. And That's this cool. is just very. Very awesome. cool, like for our project, but not well, I, I, Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, I know you and your small team, and it's growing, and are incredibly busy. So I appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. Um, it's really my pleasure. So, yeah, no, it's good to, to just dig into more detail. I mean, AI is something that is constant, and we seem to always get questions about it. Yeah. It's, it's one of those important things that is really going to make things be alive in the totally. world. I think the eye is really like for me what I like about the eye is really that the eye is kind of the game let's say because yeah, yeah, the way yeah, yeah. you play with the game and the game plays with you so it's this kind of you know yeah. nice uh, interactive part absolutely of the game, so. so the pressure is on for you I know <laughs> <laughs> but we like that awesome so wrapping up for the week a um, couple of really small community updates uh, the Terrapin uh, shipped Ample Terrapin is currently still on sale at robertspaceindustries.com. So if you go to the website, you'll see it there. Also, shortly, I think either later today or maybe tomorrow morning, depending on what time zone you're in, uh, we will have part two of the Q&A uh, for the Terrapin up there. So it'll give you guys some more detail on that. Um, Gamescom, I want to thank everybody that came out to Gamescom. I think all of us as a, an entire company, it was uh, meeting everybody there um, uh, just as support and the kind of the, the, the love and the attention that we're getting from everybody is great. It's really an awesome feeling when you're able to share your current progress with people and, and getting the positive feedback that we have been. So I um, want to thank everybody for watching our very first live show here out of Frankfurt. Um, if it wasn't for you, it, it's you guys that enables us to create this additional content and get this out to you. Um, uh, we're able to discuss more and go into greater detail and give you more of an insight into kind of what we're building and our progress. So, um, awesome. So, thank you very much. Really, it's uh, great to be here and you know, hope to see you in the verse. Absolutely. Thanks again. Till next time, we see you in the verse.